Hello everyone and welcome to this video by IntelliPad. So let's talk about AWS. Amazon Web Services or simply AWS is a secure cloud services platform used by millions that provides nearly everything businesses need to build sophisticated applications with flexibility, scalability and reliability. It is a billing model that is pay as you go with no upfront or capital cost. Amazon provides nearly 100 on-demand services with the number growing on a daily basis. Implementation is nearly instantaneous and requires little setup. It's not just about building websites on AWS. The service provides developers with access to a network suite of features that includes computing power, database storage, content delivery and a growing portfolio of related functionality. AWS is being used by businesses all over the world to help them grow and scale. Cloud computing is here to stay and Amazon Web Services solutions are accelerating its growth. Therefore, AWS is a skill that you definitely need in today's tech scenario. So we have curated a list of interview questions that will help you prepare whether you're a beginner or a professional. But before we begin, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any updates from us. So let us begin with AWS beginner interview questions. First we have, what is AWS? AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. It is an Amazon service that uses distributed IT infrastructure to provide various IT resources on demand. It offers a variety of services including infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. Next, what is EC2? EC2 is a cloud-based virtual machine over which you can have OS level control. You can use this cloud server whenever you want and when you need to deploy your own servers in the cloud similar to your on-premise servers and when you want complete control over the machine's hardware and updates. Third question, what is VPC? VPC is an abbreviation for Virtual Private Cloud. It enables you to personalize your network configuration. A Virtual Private Cloud network is logically isolated from other networks in the cloud. It provides you with your own private IP address range, internet gateways, subnets and security groups. Fourth question, what are key pairs? Amazon EC2 employs public key cryptography to encrypt and decrypt login information. In public key cryptography, the public key is used to encrypt the information while the private key is used to decrypt the information at the receiver's end. Key pairs are the combination of public and private key. Key pairs allow you to securely access the instances. Then. What is AWS Lambda? AWS Lambda is a compute service that allows you to run your code without having to manage servers. The Lambda function executes your code whenever it is required. You only have to pay when your code is running. Sixth question, what role does buffer play in Amazon Web Services? An elastic load balancer ensures that incoming traffic is distributed as evenly as possible across multiple AWS instances. A buffer will synchronize various components and make the arrangement more adaptable to a burst of load or traffic. The components are prone to receiving and processing requests in an unstable manner. The buffer creates an equilibrium between various devices and trains them to work at the same rate in order to provide faster services. Seventh question, why do we make subnets? Subnetting is the process of dividing a large network into smaller ones. These subnets can be formed for a variety of reasons. Subnets, for example, can help reduce congestion by ensuring that the traffic destined for a subnet stays in that subnet. This aids the efficient routing of traffic entering the network, which reduces the network load. Eighth question, what is the maximum number of S3 buckets you can create? There is a limit of 100 S3 buckets that can be created. Ninth question, what are the characteristics of Amazon Cloud Search? Amazon Cloud Search features autocomplete advice, Boolean searches, entire text search, faceting term boosting, highlighting, prefix searches, and finally range searches. Tenth question, what is a hypervisor? A hypervisor is a piece of software that allows you to create and manage virtual machines. It combines physical hardware resources into a platform and distributes them virtually to each user. 
Oracle Virtual Box, VMware Fusion, VMware Workstation and Solaris Zones are examples of hypervisors. Let's move on to AWS Intermediate Interview Questions. First, will your standby RDS be launched in the same availability zone as your primary? No. Standby instances are launched in different availability zones than the primary, resulting in physically separate infrastructures. This is due to the fact that the entire purpose of standby instances is to prevent infrastructure failure. As a result, if the primary instance fails, the standby instance will assist in recovering all of the data. Let's move on to the second question. Your company wishes to send and receive compliance emails from its customers using its own email address and domain. What service would you recommend for accomplishing the same goal in a simple and cost-effective manner? So for this purpose, Amazon Simple Email Service, which is also known as Amazon SES, a cloud-based email sending service can be used. Third question, you unintentionally terminated an EC2 instance in a VPC with an associated Elastic IP. What will be the outcome if you restart the instance? So Elastic IP will be disconnected from the instance only if it is terminated. There will be no change to the instance and no data will be lost if it is stopped and restarted. Fourth question, can I vertically scale an Amazon instance? How do you do it? The answer is yes. Start a new larger instance than the one you're running, then pause it to detach and discard the root. EBS volume from this server then stops the live instance and disconnects its root volume. Take note of the unique device ID, then attach that root volume to the new server and restart. You will have scaled vertically this way. Fifth question, how can you send a request to Amazon S3? You can send requests by using the REST API or the AWS SDK wrapper libraries that wrap the underlying Amazon S3 REST API. And for the sixth question, what are the various types of load balancers available in EC2? In EC2, there are three types of load balancers. First, application load balancers. They are designed to make routing decisions at the application layer. Then we have network load balancer. A network load balancer handles millions of requests per second and aids in transport layer routing decisions. Then we have classic load balancer. The classic load balancer is primarily used for applications developed on the EC2 classic network. It provides basic load balancing across multiple Amazon EC2 instances. And for the seventh question, define Amazon EC2 regions and availability zones. The availability zones are geographically distant areas. As a result, EC2 instances in other zones are unaffected if one zone fails. Regions may have one or more availability zones. This configuration also aids in latency and cost reduction. Eighth question, explain Amazon EC2 root device volume. The root device drive contains the image that will be used to boot an EC2 instance. When an Amazon AMI launches the new EC2 instance, this happens. An EBS or an instance store can support this root device volume. In general, the lifespan of an EC2 instance has no effect on the root device data on Amazon EBS. Ninth question, what is an elastic transcoder? To support multiple devices with different resolutions such as laptops, tablets and smartphones, we must change the video's resolution and format. This is easily accomplished using an Amazon Web Services tool called the Elastic Transcoder, which is a media transcoding in the cloud that precisely allows us to do the necessary. It is simple to use, affordable and highly scalable for businesses and developers. Can S3 be used with EC2 instances? And if yes, how? Amazon S3 can be used for instances with root devices that are backed up by local instance storage. Developers will have access to the same highly scalable, reliable, fast and low-cost data storage infrastructure that Amazon uses to run its own global network of websites. Developers load Amazon machine images into Amazon S3 and then move them between Amazon S3 and Amazon EC2 
to run systems in the Amazon EC2 environment. And finally, we have AWS Advanced Interview Questions. Let us look at the first question. What exactly is the distinction between a spot instance, an on-demand instance, and a reserved instance? Spot instances are unused EC2 instances that can be used at a reduced cost by users. When using on-demand instances, you must pay for computing resources without committing to a long-term contract. In contrast, reserved instances allow you to specify attributes such as instant type, platform, tenancy, region, and availability zone. When instances in specific availability zones are used, reserved instances provide significant cost savings and capacity reservations. Second question, your company wants you to propose a solution for connecting the company's data center to the Amazon cloud network. What is your suggestion? By establishing a virtual private network between the VPC and the data center, the data center can be connected to the Amazon cloud network. A virtual private network allows you to create a secure path or tunnel from your premises or device to the AWS global network. Third question, define snapshots in Amazon LightSail. Snapshots are point-in-time backups of EC2 instances, block storage drives, and databases. They can be manufactured manually or automatically at any time. Even after they have been created, your resources can always be restored using snapshots. These resources will also carry out the same functions as the originals from which the snapshots were created. Fourth question, what happens if the content in CloudFront is not present at an edge location and a request is made for it? The content will be delivered directly from the origin server by CloudFront. It will also keep the content in the cache of the edge location where it was missing. Fifth question, can you change the private IP address of an EC2 instance while it is in running or in a stopped state? The answer to that is, it cannot be altered. When an EC2 instance is launched, it is assigned a private IP address at boot time. This private IP address is assigned to the instance for the duration of its existence and cannot be changed. Then, what are the native AWS security logging capabilities? AWS CloudTrail, AWS Config, AWS Detailed Billing Reports, Amazon S3 Access Logs, Elastic Load Balancing Access Logs, Amazon CloudFront Access Logs, Amazon VPC Flow Logs, and other native AWS security logging capabilities are available. Seventh question, how can you recover or log in to an EC2 instance for which you have lost the key? So if you have lost the key, follow the steps below to recover an EC2 instance. First, check that the EC2 config service is up and running. Then, remove the instance's root volume. Then, connect the volume to a temporary instance. And then, change the configuration file. And finally, relaunch the original instance. Eighth question, which of Snowball, Snow Edge, and Snowmobile is best option for transferring large amounts of data? AWS Snowball is essentially a data transport solution for moving large amounts of data in and out of an AWS region. AWS Snowball Edge, on the other hand, adds additional computing functions in addition to providing a data transport solution. The Snowmobile is an exabyte scale migration service that can transfer up to 100 PB of data. And for the ninth question, what happens when one of the resources in a stack cannot be created successfully? If a resource in the stack cannot be created, CloudFormation automatically rolls back and terminates all resources created using the CloudFormation template. This is a useful feature if you accidentally exceed your elastic IP address limit or do not have access to an EC2 AMI. And the last question, what are some of the best security practices for Amazon EC2? Amazon EC2 security best practices include using identity and access management to control access to AWS resources, restricting access by only allowing trusted hosts or networks to access ports on an instance, only opening up those permissions you need, 
and disabling password based logins for your instances launched from your AMI. With that, we have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info for all of you cloud enthusiasts. If you want to make a career in AWS, then you might want to check out IntelliPath's AWS Certification Training Course for Solution Architect. Learn from industry experts through hands-on session, projects and case study. Reach us out to know more.